All right, now solving logarithmic equations, more complex logarithms. Again, with log, unlike exponentials, with logs, you always have to check your answers. All right, and there will be some times where we have to throw answers out. Sometimes we won't. All right, so the first one is I don't have to do any work because it's already isolated. I've got a single log term set equal to a single constant term, so I'm going to use my uniqueness property. It's base 4, so to get rid of the log base 4, I've got to raise it so it's going to be 4 is the base. I've got to raise it to the log base 4 of 3x minus 2. That's all up in the exponent. Well, whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other, and so that's also going to be raised to the 4. And so it's 4 raised to the second because there's 2 over there. We did this because the inverse property means these two things will undo one another, leave me with just what's inside. So I'll be left with the 3x minus 2 equals Four squared which is 16 and then I can solve that so add 2 add 2 so 3x equals 18 divide by 3 x equals 6 and then you check if I plug 6 in am I gonna get in a 0 or a negative and I'm fine right 3 times 6 will give me 18 minus 2 and so this checks there is an alternative way to do this you could rewrite it as an exponential so this is the way that I prefer. So this is the way I'll be using for most of the time. But if you wanted to, there is a different way. And if you know the different way, you can. And I'm going to quickly kind of set it up here. You could convert it to its exponential form, right? So if you wanted to, you could change log base 4 of 3x minus 2 equals 2 to its exponential. Remember, log base a of x equals y is the same as a to the y equals x. So you can use that property. So I could take my base 4, raise it to the second, and it's going to be equal to what's inside. And so you actually get that term right away. But I actually think it's easier to do it with the logarithm. So it's up to you. You could do either method. is fine. I don't care. Right, let's do the next example. All right, so this one I have to do a little bit of work. So I've got a couple of logarithms, I've got a constant, and so what I need to do is I need to get one logarithm on one side. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the log term to the other side. So I'm going to subtract the negative 3 log of x and move it to the other side. And so I've got log of x to the fifth minus 3 log of x equals 4. Now I'm going to move my 3 in. And so it's up to you to either move the negative 3 in or the positive 3. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'll just move the 3 and leave it a negative. So I've got log base 10 of x to the 5th minus log base 10 of x cubed. Right? I just moved the 3 and I left the negative. And now I combine my logs. If I've got a subtract same base, right? So I can combine them, base 10. And so when it's a subtraction... I change my logs to a division inside, so this simplifies to a single log, x to the fifth divided by x cubed equals 4. Now I can use my exponentials, three of those reduce, and so I get log of x squared equals 4. All right, now I've got a single logarithm set equal to a single constant term, and now I use, you know, it's up to you. Um, base 10, so I like to get rid of it by taking it raised to. So I'm actually going to move over here. And so I'm going to take 10 raised to the log of x squared equals 10 raised to the 4. Those two things undo each other, leave me with x squared, 10 to the 4th. And then I'm going to solve my x squared by taking the, the square root. Remember when I take the square root, plus or minus the square root of 10 to the 4th. So x equals plus or minus 100. So there are two answers. x equals 100. x equals negative 100. And remember, I can check them. And so right away, I already know I'm going to throw one of them out. So I always go back to the original to check them. If I plug the negative 100 in, right, in both of those terms, because the odd degree leaves the negative, it's going to give me an error, right? I can't have a negative answer, so that gets thrown away. The 100 works, the positive 100 works, but the negative 100, this is an extraneous solution, so we throw it out. 
And so we're just going to keep the 100. That's the only answer to this. So x equals 100. All right, we'll stop there. We'll pick up the next ones in the next video.